Hey there, folks. It's Jimmy Stewart here, hoping this is finding you all doing well. Well, today's video, we're going to do something completely different. Uh, as you know, I do guitars, I do amplifiers, I do all kinds of music gadgets, pedals, and all that kind of stuff. But today, I decided I wanted to try to clean up some of the floor area here in the studio because as we gain more and more guitars it becomes more and more cluttered although it looks cool uh, I would like to get some of those guitars up off the ground and I've got a ton of guitars here um, in the studio here what you don't see is along the walls I have guitars hanging and uh, I run a dehumidifier here in the uh, summertime and I run a humidifier in the wintertime so I try to keep the the actual humidity here around that 50 percent point uh, all summer and all winter and I'll show you a quick uh, view of right now I'm running at 51 percent which is great and uh, I will show you that in another camera angle but again I want to try to get these guitars up I have 12 uh, hanging guitars in here you can see them on your side here with the two up there. I've got them all along the wall here, then along the wall back in the other side of the studio as well. So that gives me 12 accessible guitars. I usually have that wall as an acoustic wall, and uh, my other acoustics are in cases. Uh, here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine guitars here as well. So I want to try to consolidate those. So what I did was I bought a couple of racks off of Amazon and I just received them. So I thought, why not? I'll do a quick video of these racks, uh, see how they are. Now I bought them on Amazon. Here, let me grab one for you. I got two. These are the Rocket. Rocket Stage Accessory Guitar Racks, these are a five rack, five guitars per rack, and I bought two, so I figured that would get at least the guitars that I have currently here in the studio up off the floor and into racks, so I don't have this much space being used up. Um, and then I've got ten guitar stands that, you know, that I'll have spare but I'll keep a couple out there because sometimes uh, you bring out the Steinberger or you bring out a smaller guitar or a Paula guitar or things like that sometimes they work better on smaller stands I have a stand right there that is specifically for my Steinberger because that's a headless guitar and it will only fit on that particular kind of stand so uh, I will do a video today of this we'll build a couple of these racks and uh, see how they are again they get fairly good reviews on Amazon uh, and then there's some horrible reviews on Amazon so take it as it is uh, I will give you the honest review of what I think they are after we get them built uh, they shouldn't be too too difficult I don't think and uh, although some of the reviews on Amazon say they're terrible and you, and you bolts don't line up and what have you and then other reviews say they're great so I'm going to just leave them here in the studio. I'm not going to take these on stage. I don't really think from the reviews I've read that they're really stage worthy, but they should be fine for here in the studio for putting my guitars up. And uh, that's all we're going to be using them for. These were like um, $43, I think, $43 and some change. Uh, so to get uh, two racks that'll hold 10 guitars, Again, I'm not going to put any acoustics on here. This is all for electrics. The acoustics have their wall up there. Um, so let's put them together and see what we got, shall we? Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and open this. Hopefully we have a decent camera angle. And we'll get these rocket stands put together here. Here we got lots of nuts and bolts and wing nuts here. I guess they might be arms. This actually feels pretty good. It doesn't feel cheap, which is surprising. Must 
be the bottom pads, I guess. There's the top. One, two, three, four. One, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five guitars. And there's nothing else in there, so let's get rid of this box. Stick that over there. So it looks like we got a pair of tubes for the bottom, a top. This looks like it might be the sides, and it looks like a set of feet. Now these are, they are labeled with different numbers. We got a bag of stuff here, so let's see if there's any instructions at all in here. paper. Now it's going to be one of these things where it's just a picture, right? Yeah. User instructions. Just a picture of how this goes together. Okay, so A are the A is one side, B is one side. C and D are the feet. What this is a little pull tab or something over here. Oh, well, maybe it's to, you can fold it up. All right, well, let's have a look here. And again, I'll try not to bore you with all of this. I will go ahead and fast forward through this as I'm putting it together, unless I have any major problems, and then I'll stop and, and uh, see what we got here. All right, so it looks like we got one, two, four wing nuts, Well, those are different sizes. See, these are different sizes. So we got to figure out where those go. One long and one short here. So let's see how many long ones we got and how many short ones. That's a short one. No, that's a long one. Okay. Now some of them have hex key holes in them and others don't. See that? So that's a long one that's a short one that's a long one and then some of them have the head around the bottom there and no hex key on the top see that See the difference? So we'll have to figure it out that because as far as I can see, it doesn't tell you on the instruction sheet which ones go where. So you got two, two shorter ones that have a no hex key. And you have two short ones that do have a hex key. And four that have a hex key. Let's see, we got one, two, Three, four, five, six. So we have eight washers, so they all get a washer, and we have a Allen key wrench here to put them together. So it doesn't look like I need any tools. And one, two, three, four wing nuts. All right, so I'll just have to look at this diagram here and see what we get. And again, I'll fast forward through this so I don't bore you, like, like I said, unless I have any issues, okay? And these are labeled, so this is A and B. It looks like A is the left hand side, B is the right hand side, according to the directions. So there's A and there's B. And B, according to these directions, goes on the right hand side because that's got a little pull diagram here, I guess, to be able to collapse the stand or fold it up or something. And I don't really need to do that, at least here in the studio. Okay. That goes on the bottom. So the little cap tops are the top of the stand. So that's going to go like so. Okay, and these have got hex key holes in them. So 
that will use one of those bolts that's got the it's got the head on it one of these and that'll go there a and b like so then we got the feet this is c and d so c goes on the left side okay I mean, they feel pretty good, actually. Right, so that's going to go like that, with D being on the right side and C being on the left side, like so. The arms will go down into here, or the uh, that part of it. These look like they're the bottom poles according to the diagram. The stuff is, I mean, it's its pretty hefty, although it's still light, and they feel pretty good. Um, well padded. These don't get a number, so I guess it doesn't make any difference which one goes where. They should be the same size and the same length, and they... They appear to be. And then the top. This. Everything's wrapped nicely. Nice padding for each neck separation. So this is going to go that will go on top of those holes, like down here. That will go like that. Right? And these will go in here. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward it for now, folks, and uh, we'll get this built and uh, be back. So far, everything seems to be fitting all right. All right, let's see if we can figure out the bottom here. The legs look like they're adjustable, or the bottom parts are, it looks like. These have got to be for the back of the stand because there's no hex there. Then I will assume all these long ones go to the, because there's four of them, the long ones go to these. Well, so far, I'm not seeing any issue with anything lining up, at least not yet. Not too tight, I don't want to strip them, but it does, it seems fairly, it actually seems fairly sturdy, which is good. I mean, I'm not going to be putting Fenders, Gibsons, and Martins, oh my, on this stand. I'm just going to be using it for my inexpensive guitars. So there's the bottom.
and that just gets bolted in like so, I guess, with these last two bolts and thumb nuts. I mean, that's not horrible. If the guitars fit on there, it's not terrible. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and test some guitars here, and uh, we'll be back in a second. All right, so I got both of those built. It didn't take very long, about 15, 20 minutes each. And they work wonderfully. They're not, you know, top of the line or anything like that, but they'd be perfect for in here in the studio. I'm thinking maybe I should get something a little bit longer, maybe a seven guitar, but this is fine because it got up everything that I had on the floor that I wanted to, to put away, or at least have accessible, but on stands without crowding. So they worked good. In fact, all my, all my, uh, Offsets fit fine, even with all the whammy bars, as you can see over here. So that works good. My acoustic wall is back to being my acoustic wall, which is great. I got two of my jazz guitars over there, the 335 or 338 uh, Firebird and the jazz box from IYV. Over here is my Les Paul and telly wall with fireflies over there and i still got a ton of guitars and cases that i have to you know and i bring them out but what's nice now is that uh as i'm demonstrating and choosing a guitar for the day i left my stands there so i can still have access to those and that works out well all right folks so i got these both these racks built, took about 15-20 minutes each, not too too bad once I figured out which screws went where. Uh, little diagram in there is not overly helpful, but they did label them A, B, C, D and that kind of thing. Uh, they just didn't tell you where the bolts went, but once you look at the, at the mounts you can kind of tell. They're fairly light but relatively sturdy. They're holding five guitars per rack without any problem. My offsets fit well on them as well. And uh, I kept my, because I like my wooden tri-stands here, my little A-folds, and I like my stool stand. So those are all going to stay here, and that gives me my access to the guitars that I'll be demonstrating and or reviewing during a particular time frame for each video. I like to have those up front so I don't have to reach over and grab. And uh, I've got all my guitars that were all over the place. Um, on stands and secure. Now, would I take these on a gig? Um, probably not. Although they're again, they're okay. But I, you know, uh, I think they're kind of a stationary type stand, perfect for a studio rehearsal room or something like that. I wouldn't be moving them around, and I certainly wouldn't be moving them with guitars on them. It's way too heavy. Uh, but it, again, I think they're going to do a fine job for $43 a piece, so less than 100 bucks. I think about, you know, if you figure it out, with tax it was around $80-something dollars for 10 guitar stands, five per, you know, five guitars per stand. Uh, I think it was worth it. Uh, these are not bad at all. I mean, I didn't have any issues with uh, holes not lining up or, or parts missing or anything like that. You know, I think they're... I think they're well I, I believe they're worth the money so if you have a studio environment or you're collecting guitars and your guitar collection is building up kind of like mine did uh, I'd recommend it it's a fairly inexpensive way yes they're not top of the line 
Uh, there, you can spend a lot of money on you know, Hercules stands and things like that, which are really well built, uh, but they're expensive. Or, you know, I'm keeping with the inexpensive theme of the channel here, with the exception of my classic guitar series, which is a new one coming up here shortly. Classic vintage guitar series. Um, you know, I, I keep on the budget here, and uh, I think they are well worth the $43 that they cost. So, if you're looking for something like that, check them out on Amazon. It's the Rocket Stage Accessor Accessories, the R-I-G-T-R Guitar Racks, and it's a 5 rack. I think they have them in 7 as well. Uh, maybe more. I didn't really look that much. I knew I had 10 guitars I wanted to get up off the individual stands and get sorted out. So we're gonna, that's going to finish it up for today, folks. Thank you so, so much for stopping in. Um, thank you so, so much for subscribing. I do appreciate that. We're going to be doing some things here coming up shortly as well. So some more comparisons. We're going to introduce Bob, Billy Bob, and Billy Joe Bob with a little comparison on those grouts, grotes, grouts, whatever you want to call them. I just call them Bob. And now we've got the three names for the three that I have. So we're going to do some comparisons with those and some other fun things coming up as well. So until next time, folks, it's Jimmy Stewart. Say you so long. Take care of yourselves. I still had my headphones on. Oh, well. Uh, and we'll talk to you all again very, very soon. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye-bye for now.